Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa bihi nasta'inu ala umuri dunya wad din. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihil amin sayyidina wa habibina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-jalil a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim innama al-mu'minuna ikhwah فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون. Respected brothers and sisters, I'm delighted and honored once again to appear to you to say a few things on some issues that have been spread around in the community. And I feel that this is very important to do some sort of clarification because when fitness is spread when rumors are spread, it can poison the minds of many members of our community. And hence, it can create chaos, it can create disunity, it can create animosity and tension and even conflict between our community members. And so it is very important for me to explain what was really happening in the community then many or some of our brothers and sisters are trying to do in terms of intensifying the issues and poisoning the minds of some brothers and sisters around us. Let me just begin by reminding myself and all of us that it is incumbent, it is very important, it is a must on all of us to take into our consideration that building a community in the United States of America is one of the most important priorities of this Ummah. Because we are facing tremendous challenge at the moment. Islamophobia is on the rise. The hate against Muslims and Islam is also on the rise. Misconception about our religion is still deeply in the minds of many of our neighbors and friends. And therefore it is our responsibility to do every possible way in order to minimize the effect and the negative impact of this, those misunderstandings of our religion. But unfortunately, it is so difficult to do that while some members of our own community are trying to destroy some members of ours and our own communities. So let me begin by saying this. The rumors that have been spread around is not new. It had been for the last five, seven years. It was began when some individuals wanted to attack my own personal character, uh, wanted to destroy my reputation and my name. But Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want that to happen. And I do believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so just and loving and compassionate, Rahman al-Rahim, to any of his servants. And so he protected us. But the, these brothers are continuing their effort they're continually, continuously spreading out rumors and fitness in the community. Recently, another issue had been spread, and that is an imam somewhere in Astoria, an imam belongs to Masjid al-Hikmah, that, that most belongs to the Indonesian community. The imam of that mosque was arrested. And let me just tell you first who that imam was. The imam was brought by someone, an individual, without the consultation of the congregation, without the consultation of members of the board and the mosque committee. So when the Imam came, basically we recept him, we receive him. He was received by the community well, because we need an Imam. But unfortunately, because he was brought by that particular person and he was not brought by the members of the committee, that Imam did not want to recognize the board of trustees and the, member, the committee of that mosque. So the conflict happened between the Imam and the committee. The Imam feels that he is the in charge of the mosque, while in any mosque it is not the Imam, because normally the Imam is a higher person. The in charge must be either board of trustees or the committee. So there is a conflict happened between the two, and it, is, it was going on until for almost one year. Ramadan came. The Imam didn't want to listen to the committee, the committee invited two Imams to lead us in Taraweeh, in Masjid al-Hikmah. But what happened, the Imam continuously opposed the committee of the mosque. Not only that, he arranged his own Jummah, 
he arranged his own congregation. The followers of the Imam is like five to ten maximum people follow him in his own lectures. The majority of the people did not want this Imam to stay. So when this Imam did several things, including changing the Qibla, for example, or doing his own Juma, the, the committee of the mosque finally fired him. He gave him a letter once, he didn't accept it. The second, he re rejected it. The third one, he also rejected it, saying that you did not appoint me, but I was appointed by that person, the one who brought him here to the United States of America. What happened? The committee then did a very firm decision. The committee informed the immigration that this Imam had been fired from this mosque and therefore his visa must be revoked. So his visa, working visa, was revoked by the request of the committee. So after revoking his visa, he was given 10 days to go, to go back to Indonesia voluntarily by his own. But again, he rejected it. Possibly he thought that the committee cannot do anything. So one day during the month of Ramadan, this imam was arrested by ICE or immigration officer. Now, this arrest again is used by some individuals, including two persons here at the Jamaica Muslim Center, to attack me. And they spread rumors that it's because of the, I was the one who basically reported this imam to the immigration. I was the one who is against him. There is a conflict between me and him. Basically, there is no conflict between me and him. There, is, uh, there are disagreements between me and him because this Imam said that interfaith, for example, is haram. Interfaith is not Islamic. Interfaith is against the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. While I am a very much interfaith person. I'm working with the Jewish people, I'm working with the Christian people, I'm working with Hindus and Buddhists for a better community. But this Imam said that interfaith is haram. So I have disagreement with him. But it doesn't mean that I was the one who reported him to the eyes. He was reported by the committee of the mosque, uh, Masjid al-Hikmah. Why? Because he did not want to listen to the committee. So this is the, 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 the other issue that had been spread around as the rumors, as a fitna against me by these individuals. Now, I wanted to come back again to the issue of Jum'ah prayer. You know, another issue that had been spread around is that I was this person at Jum'ah prayer. I was topping a Jum'ah prayer while this Imam was delivering khutbah. In fact, that is not true. The truth to the fact is that one day on Friday, and it was May 19, I was officiating a marriage of one of my brothers here in Jamaica Muslim Center. His name is Rafiq D. Manju. His daughter married. And I was the one who officiated that marriage at ICLI, Islamic Center of Long Island, in the morning around 10 o'clock. When I'm done with that officiation of the marriage, I did not have any schedule anywhere to deliver khutbah. So I directly went to Masjid al-Hikmah to perform my Jum'ah. When I arrived there around 12.45, I found there is a chaos. There is um, a shouting. There is a noise between the members of the committee and this Imam. The Imam took over the member, delivered his khutbah, while the committee has already invited someone to deliver a khutbah. He's a guest speaker. His name is Sheikh Nasr Har. So when that happened, I entered into the mosque, and someone took the video while I was walking towards the imam, asking him to, get, to give that person his time to deliver khutbah. And because of that video, these people make YouTube out of it. They spread it out saying that I was the one who stopped that prayer. This is another fitna that is being spread around my brothers and sisters. I understand Islam, alhamdulillah. I studied Islam, alhamdulillah, since my childhood. I have sort of knowledge, a little knowledge about the religion, how it is possible that me to stop someone who is delivering khutbah without any reason. I went to that masjid to pray Jum'ah, but I found out that this Imam took over the member while the khatib is already there to deliver khutbah. He took it over without the permission from the committee. It's an, it is an embarrassment uh, for the committee that he invited someone to come while this Imam took over the, 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 the khutbah. There are many, many other accusations that have been uh, spread out, that have been um, thrown out uh, through YouTube, through social media, by these, I can say, irresponsible uh, individuals. But let me end with this. We are living in America. We understand the challenge we are facing here every time, every morning. Again, it is our responsibility to maintain our community united. 
it is our responsibility to make sure that our community is growing tremendously strongly. It is our responsibility to make sure that our action will be watched by our neighbors and they can see that we are a living Islam. If we ourselves are going to disunite ourselves, accusing one another with different accusations without any, any base, trading fitna and rumors around, then we are going to destroy, not only destroying me personally, not only destroying any imams around or any individuals, but it destroys our community at large. So I would like to appeal to each and every one of you that if you hear anything regarding this issue, come to me directly because I am a part of you, I'm a part of the community, and I'm ready to sit down with you, I'm ready to clarify it. But more important, remember, my brothers, let me end with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not sleeping. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows every single minds that we have, every single intention that we have, and every single action that we take in life. And in the Day of Judgment, no matter who we are, we are going to be taken responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every word, every rumor, every saying that we are spreading out is, is, a, is a point of responsibility. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as the truth so that we can be able to follow the truth and show us the false as the falsehoods so we can avoid the falsehood inshallah ta'ala. Again, thank you so much. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. TV. Call of Peace. Save humanity.